Tanse. My name is Donna Lee. I'm here to represent the Indigenous community. I'm here to make my original Bannock recipe. It's my original recipe as I wanted to take out any yeast, sugar or dairy so that it would be a healthier version. A lot of people think that it is a Canadian bread custom to the Indigenous people but it actually originated in Scotland and was brought over by the travellers. I'm going to be making my original bannock today and I'm about to add six cups of flour. The next, I take one half tablespoon of salt and I take a full scoop. And then a third a cup of baking powder. And because I like to make fluffy desserts out of bannock, I usually just have it over the top of a third of a cup. I always use a wooden spatula. And this is an important part to make sure that the dry ingredients is totally mixed well. And then I leave a little dent right in the middle. Now I'm going to get the proper temperature of the water to add to the bannock. And it's very important to make it lukewarm, not too hot and not too cold. And then I just add my three cups of lukewarm water. I mix the oil in the lukewarm water so that when I add it to the bannock dry mix, there isn't any little uh, creamy lumps that I have found in the past. So you can see the wet mixture is in with the dry. Now I want to make sure that this isn't over stirred, but everything is covered. I'm going to start in the middle because that's where, in your bowl, it will tend to settle. Okay, now I'm going to leave it for 10 minutes because it has lukewarm water and it's going to activate the baking powder for a fluffier bannock. So I've made a batch of a cinnamon sugar fritters and children and adults love them alike. It's original bannock with as much or as little sugar as you want. After they're done, I usually coat them in a light vanilla glaze and then spread cinnamon sugar over top. But today I'm going to just show you how to make them. This is all pre-made, but I'm going to show you um, the size that is usually popular. Now 10 minutes have gone by and the bannock has risen. I can see it with my eye. There's all sorts of ways that you can make this. I'm going to show you three samples. My grandmother used to shape her bannock like this. She said about two inches wide. So you always want bannock golden brown. Okay, is the one that I sell at the fair. And it's a lot of bannock. It's about a half a cup of bannock. So I make a, at least a six inch diameter piece of bannock. We serve this with butter, homemade jam on top. And people really, really love it. And now I'm just going to make a flat bread, which is really popular to keep in your house, in your freezer. It's really convenient if you run out of bread, you need to make sandwiches. And of course it's the same as that one, only thinner. There we go, that one. 